Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima and I'm here checking out Thumper. Thumper is... How do I put it? A very simple game. But we won't worry about that right now, I'll explain once we get to it actually, but... We'll go have a look at the options first. You can turn the HUD off, but I don't know why you'd do that, it's not really that in the way. You can come here and change your controls, including your action button, your quick restart button, which doesn't start out bound or anything. But your action button by default is A, and it never it never doesn't be A. So even if I have it set to R here, it never changes from A, and I'd recommend keeping it on A. Unless you are, like, really comfortable using the back triggers or something. I'm not entirely sure why you would be, but there you go. And for audio, oddly enough, you can only turn the volume up and down, and I would like there to be multiple meters here, because there are things like musical cues that can tell you when certain obstacles are coming up that would be nice to have louder but no it's just one full-on audio slider and it also starts out really low to the point where you can't really hear it if you don't have your switch's speakers up so i don't know why they've done that but it's there and it's worth noting that it's there so if you're wondering why the game's quiet go there and get that fixed you have leaderboards and as you can see i've gone up to level four nobody's on um the leaderboards for level 5 yet, which is a bit odd, but nothing too out of the ordinary, I guess, because this game is really fucking difficult. You can change it between global ranking, your ranking, and your friend's ranking, which is a, you know, a nice touch for leaderboards, obviously. And that's pretty much it. We have two modes. We have play mode and play plus mode. Play plus mode is literally plays levels, but slightly faster, and you only have one life. And the amount I'm going to die in this video will tell you how bad of an idea that is. So we have ten, nine levels? Yeah, that's nine levels, not, not ten, sorry. And these nine levels are relatively simple in concept. Except I, I tried playing through level five, but I just couldn't do it. Just level five, five just trips me the fuck up with its instant double turn walls. They're absolutely fucking infuriating. So we're going to have to pop back to level four, which is unfortunate. Not much we can do about that, though. About that, though. This is about two hours in. So, you know, <laughs> this level is going to take a fucking age to get through. They all take ages to get through just because of how easy it is to fail. And if you fail... You have to go back and do an entire part of the level again, and there's like 30 individual parts to every goddamn level, and it's the most infuriating thing ever, but we will get onto that. So, this is Thumper. You are this weird-ass beetle. Why are you this weird-ass beetle? I don't know. Why are you being chased by what appears to be a gigantic, scarier version of Andros from Star Fox? I don't know, but... It's, it's there, it's the plot. There's, I don't even think there is a plot. I literally think this is a video game for the sake of being a video game. It just so happens you're controlling a beetle against a giant skull. I'm... I'm not going to ask any more questions other than that. We're going to focus on the actual game side of things now. Because of course we're going to do that. So this is Thumper. Thumper is... Very simple to understand. You have one analog stick and you have one action button and that's how you do all of the actions in this game. There is no other sort of thing you need to worry about. It's literally just you have one button and one analog stick. The analog stick is used to move you both in the lane that you're in and two other lanes if other lanes show up. And it is you use the action button in time with the analog stick movements in order to actually do stuff. And once we get out of the weird tutorial section that every level has the beginning of it, I'm not entirely sure why they don't let you skip this on repeated playthroughs, but... Oh well. So at the end of every stage you'll get like score bonuses and stuff like that for... doing things correctly, like um, if you take no damage obviously, or if you get a perfect run on the level, or... Just stuff like that, it's fairly obvious. Once you've seen the game for more than a couple of minutes, you'll know what it's likely to score you on. And that's pretty much it. So, yeah, this is Thumper. This is actually what Thumper is like. You have one failure. And if you mess any of these objectives up, whether it be um, using the analog stick to turn against these walls or holding the button down in order to, um, in order to successfully bash through these like little fences that get put in your way you 
you go back to the start of the level that you were just on, and the level ends are denoted by the big circles floating out in space, and if you manage to hit that little collectible under it, you will get your health back. You can also restore your health during stages, but it seems really inconsistent as to when you can do that, and I'm not entirely sure what the conditions are yet, but it's there, it's doable, I've done it more than once, so it's not just a weird fluke. So yes, the game itself is very simple considering that you only have one button and one analog stick to work with. The difficulty obviously comes from the course design, and the course design is a pain in the fucking neck. Uh, most of the levels work along this concept. They, too, they do tend to add new mechanics and stuff as you go on, including uh, flying over shit and um, having these rings where you have to hit absolutely every blue spot on the bottom using the A button. Otherwise, you'll take a hit. And yeah, it's just a massive pain in the ass. Because the courses are designed to be difficult, and a fair few of the courses are just difficult, but sometimes it gets so difficult that it feels unfair. Like, for example, there are some courses where you'll get two turns so close to each other inside tunnels that are absolutely invisible until you come across it the first time. And it's, it's just kind of unfair, because it makes the game feel like... It makes the- no, oh Christ, I turned to get into the wall and not away from the wall. It makes the game feel a little bit more memory-oriented than muscle memory and reflex-oriented than it really should be, because I could see this game working really well if you only need to rely on reflexes, but there are some traps that you are just not going to be able to get the first time, and it just feels kind of unfair in some places at the very least. But a fair amount of the course design, though, does feel very fair. And it... They... I'll give them credit for at least giving you, like, the tutorial sections at the beginning of the levels where you get to see what all these other obstacles are going to be. I didn't manage to hit that thing on time. I've noticed that I'm actually a little out of sync with this game, and I think it's because of the music. If you listen very carefully to the music in the background, there's, it's a very loud thumping sound, and even at level 5, it's roughly about the same. They don't really seem to introduce that much new in the way of soundtrack throughout the levels. And it just, it's kind of disappointing, honestly. I was hoping for something a little bit more, well, how just different, really. But, no, they tend to have the same sort of style, both graphically and sound, as they go through. And there are something that, I mean, to be fair, it's not a bad sound. They got a pretty good soundtrack going for them on this one, and yeah, this is a weird little break level that they introduce every now and again, but I'm not entirely sure why they do it. It's kind of inconsistent where they show up, but oh well. The sound does sound great, but the thing is, most rhythm games that I've played tend to sync up the beat of the songs with the actual, um, with, with the, with the actual gameplay, so, you know, you hit the button on the beat. This game doesn't seem to do that. It's weird. It, it kind of works in the same way that, um, Space Invaders Extreme does, if anyone remembers that game, where the sound effects and stuff would actually add themselves, more or less, to the track, and it would make a full track through it, instead of using the, instead of using the soundtrack to guide you as, like, a, there's like a BPM sort of sort of metronome thing going on. And in this game, I don't think it works very well just because it makes it really hard to determine what the beat is. And the beat in this game is really kind of odd. It does change constantly, so maybe it wouldn't work. But yeah, it's still just a bit weird like that. It just doesn't feel right in the grand scheme of things. It does sound great though, and listening to it on the Switch speakers... Just, it's kind of a pain, honestly, because the speakers on the Switch just aren't up to this sort of soundtrack, and it sounds really bad and kind of compressed. It doesn't sound that good at all, and it's kind of disappointing, actually. I originally played this game on handheld, but I hooked it up to my computer and played my... and played it through the speaker, which is, um, 
what I usually do on these recordings. And it sounded great. Then I took it out of the speaker and it just sounded terrible. So it's um, it's not exactly a game that's designed to be played on the Switch speakers. I don't think it's designed to be played on the Switch screen either because I'm playing on like a 19, 20 inch monitor, something like that, right? And I'm having trouble seeing some of the things that are coming. So I imagine this is the sort of game that's meant to be played on a TV, which kind of sucks when you're talking about the Switch because when you're talking about the Switch, you're talking about playing it on the go, and it's just a bit of a dick, I gotta say. It will work okay in handheld mode, though. Handheld mode performance is fantastic. It holds a smooth 60 FPS the entire time. I haven't noticed any frame rate drops for it whatsoever. So that's actually kind of impressive, considering the level of graphical fidelity we've got going on here. And it runs at, I'm pretty sure it runs at the native uh, resolution of the Switch as well, which is um, 720p. And you're seeing it in 1080p right now, and it is, it is pulling its own as well. It's not skipping a beat. I'm trying to play the levels as, um, as like, you know, score focused as possible, but I'm not very good at this game, if you could tell. So, um, it's... I, I do kind of have to try and play it in a way that'll let me get through and let you see the stages while at the same time still trying to score at least some points. But as it, that was actually, um, if you saw the blue things flying out and going into my body before that last one that signified the end of the level, that was um, the mid-level heal. I'm not entirely sure, as I said before, what the consistency is like on these things, but for some reason it's just, it, it's for some and not for others. Might as well talk about the graphical fidelity. The game looks gorgeous. Like, Jesus Christ. I'm actually kind of impressed they pulled this off on the Switch. This looks more impressive than games like Breath of the Wild. I'm... I'm... I really am impressed. It's just... Look at it. It's so shiny and it's so quick and it doesn't skip a beat. It is really impressive. Alright, I'm gonna have to, um, just resort to holding down the A button and playing through this entire stage like this because... If I do much more than that, I'm going to get myself killed over and over again. This is kind of just how I resort to getting through stages normally. Except on stage 5, where they introduce the fuckers where if you don't hit every one of those blue things on the ground, you take a hit. So you need to get all the blue things, otherwise you won't be able to make it through the damn level. This game hates me and everything that I do, so there you go. I forgot I have to actually turn there. Well, I made it through the level, even though I didn't get the health, so the checkpoint will respawn me if I do end up dead, which is alright. I actually managed to get it through without taking any damage. That's a that's a good start. So, might as well start talking again, but the question is, do I have anything to actually talk about at this point? Um, I guess the mechanical simplicity. I mean, I can understand this game getting really boring for people really quickly. I mean, it's meant to be a score attack game focused on precision, so I guess I can appreciate how, um, how simplistic this is. But at the same time, I could see get people getting bored of it really fast. Shit. I could see people getting bored of it really fast just because of, um... Just because of how it only really relies on a very simple set of mechanics. And again, this is like a score attack game through and through. There's no sort of, um... I mean, other than playing through the levels one time, which is so heavily focused on score that you feel bad skipping as much of this as you can. 
I mean, there's, um... I don't want to say there's nothing else here to enjoy about it. Uh, like, I mean, the graphics and the presentation look good, obviously. But with the, um... With the overall lack of variety in the audio and the gameplay, it does kind of seem like a one-trick pony if you aren't a fan of score attacking. So, unless you're a really big fan of score attacking, it's kind of hard to recommend this game just because that's really all this game does. It does it well enough, I guess. It's just, again, you've got stages that really try and fuck with you with things that require ridiculous reflexes to the point where you're not going to get that shit the first time. And I always hate these sorts of games when you can't get through them the first time on pure skill, at least in the first few levels, or even just the first run through. Like, I was expecting Play Plus to be like a new set of levels just based on the old designs, but it wasn't. So, unless you are really a big fan of masochism or sadism, I don't remember which one it is, I never do, and that's why people hate me sometimes, um, it's just kind of... It, it really is just kind of a one-trick score attack pony. It doesn't... And it doesn't really have that sort of um, variety the game like Super Meat Boy has, which is also focused on difficulty, but it also has like a bunch of characters and like a bunch of different ways to complete each level. And, you know, finding the one that will give you the quickest time is something along the lines of... Um, is something along the lines of variety, at the very least. Meanwhile, you've got this game, which is literally just... You have one way to get through these levels... And you just have to try over and over again to get the highest score, and there doesn't really seem to be much to it other than that, which... Not the worst thing in the world. Not really, but at the same time, it just comes kind of hard to recommend to anyone who isn't a score attack junkie just because of that. I was kind of amazed to see how high scores this got on everything, by the way. Like, a bunch of people reviewed this game great, but, um... Yeah, it just... It just seems a bit too thin on the ground, at least for me personally. I'm not entirely sure what, um, I'm not entirely sure what other people see in this game, but personally, I don't think I'll be coming back to it just because it's a score attack game and I hate these sorts of things, but even then, the game is starting to grade on me a little, even after just two hours. Especially considering how much replaying you have to do in order to get through some of the levels the first time, because these levels take ages, if you couldn't tell. Like, um, I'm currently 15 minutes into this level, or just, like, about that, right? And I'm only two-thirds of the way through. This level goes all the way to 4.30. So, these, it, it is kind of hard to maintain your focus for the entirety of this, especially when you have to replay levels over and over and over again. It just gets really difficult to keep yourself engaged, and that is a massive problem. I would argue that this game would be served better by, like, cutting the levels in half and adding more checkpoints. So, like, have a level with a lot of tiny stages and do that with. It, I imagine that would work way better in comparison to what the game's like now, where you have to spend 15 to 20 minutes just getting through the stage to begin with, and then just, yeah, like, these are obviously divided, these are divided into obvious sections that could easily be split out into their own checkpoints, at least that's what I think. Like, imagine if there was a way to, like, skip the checkpoints, like, um, Shovel Knight, and skipping the checkpoints would actually give you, like, extra points. That would be great, and that would, um, that would create a lot less of a frustration factor for someone like me who isn't very good at these sorts of games. I could see that working a lot better than this current one, which just feels like a 20 to 30 minute death gauntlet, no matter what you do, so... I don't remember how much this game is going to be. I think it's going to be 20 bucks, but if I'm wrong on that, I will put something up on the screen right about now. Well, I'm going to have to look through this goddamn video to remember where I put that bloody statement because I'm an idiot who doesn't like, who isn't able to like do checkpoints on videos or something like that. But I don't know. Maybe it would be worth it at like 10 or five dollars. Just something a little cheaper that makes it some. Um, you know, one trick pony concept. Not so much stick out a bit more, but just seem that tiny bit more 
um, reasonable. And it is okay. Like, I know I've spent a lot of time ragging on it, but it is relatively satisfying to relative it is re it is fairly satisfying to drive this weird ass beetle through all these stages and get the patterns down and hearing like the the grind against the wall as you turn and um all the little beeps and boops that go into making the soundtrack sound great but um yeah me personally i don't find myself getting into it that's pretty much all I have to say on the matter. What I'm going to do is at the end of this stage, I'm going to do a jump cut to the boss of this level. I'm going to have to like play through the entirety of the stage in order to get there. But I don't want to spend too much longer going through this. Oh, fuck me. I don't, I don't want to spend too much longer going through much of this. Although to be fair, you have already seen a boss or... You already have seen a boss, and the boss is literally just the same, it just looks like a giant skull, so that's a thing. As you can see, I'm I'm really I really am just cheesing it right now. But again, you can't cheese it on five onwards, so oh well. back. Uh, we're about to go on to the boss level, and I screwed that up right there. Um, I just wanted to not correct my previous self. The game is $20 on launch, so yeah, I'll just say it again. For that price, I don't think so, unless you're really into your score attack games. If you wait until 5 or $10, you've seen enough of the game to know whether or not you'll enjoy it at that sort of price. At least I hope you have. Seriously, it just does kind of look like a Devil Andros, I guess. But then again, I, I've never really played Star Fox. I've only seen a couple of pictures of Andros, so um, not going to claim to know too much about that, mates. Yeah, the boss battles are. The same except for the pattern. You have to get through multiple of these patterns uh, by hitting every single one of these damn things. And if you die even once, you go back to the first pattern. So, and you have to do this four times in a row. You do get heals in between if you, well, apparently not in between all of them, but you do get heals after some of them. So, It's not entirely unfair, but Jesus fuck if it's not teetering on the edge. Shit. God damn it, one hit away from getting him and I managed to fuck it up. Because of course I did. Level 4 Omega. This is where you'll be spending most of your time doing your repeats just because of the way the bloody um, system works in this game. I feel bad for... God, I just... I feel bad for people trying to play this on like plus... So they just, you just end up playing through the goddamn thing and you 
put in so much effort only to die on the boss because you missed one fucking tiny thing and it, and it and you ended up you ended up just failing because of that. Yeah, yeah, I got my wings back. Gotcha. The explosion took longer, that's how you know you're one. <laughs> and... You get your final score. And you get to go back to the main menu after getting a letter rank, which is C. Because, as you can see, no pun intended, it's not particularly good as a record for me. So yeah, there you go. That was a look at Thumper. It's not that bad of a game, but it is very score attack driven. And it doesn't really do much else other than that. Looks great, runs really well, and sounds alright, but it just... Yeah, it's just that that one note gameplay that just kind of prevents me from recommending it outright. Uh, maybe if it goes on sale. But other than that, it's it's perfectly fine as a game with a few issues here and there. I don't know if they'll update it with anything in the near future, but it'd be nice if they did. So, oh well. This has been Blue Maxima, and I'll see you all next time.